Who's ready to build a CPU mining rig? And this one is special, unlike the other ones we have done. What's going on everyone, Rabbit here, and today we are gonna be building another dedicated CPU mining rig. But first, please hit that subscribe button, thumbs up button, as well as bell notification to be notified for future videos. So unlike our previous videos where we do build with a 3900X CPU because we usually find them at the best deals, I came across this right here. A 3950X, probably didn't focus too well because of the glare and whatnot, but we got a 3950X Ryzen CPU for about $600. So these things are going retail at around 1,000 to 1,100. So we got this thing at $600. So I was like, I'm all for it. That's only like, a, that's almost the same as MSRP on the 3900Xs. And I never try to get CPUs at this current market at MSRP because you can always find them cheaper. So I recommend do not go out there and just splurge and waste money on MSRP prices when it does come to CPUs. Who knows in the future what could happen if CPU mining does take off. Prices could go to the moon and MSRP looks cheap right now. But right now, I always try to get everything as cheap as possible. And right now, that is under MSRP. Quick build list here. Here we do have our X470 Gaming Plus Max, which is already updated for Ryzen's 3000s in the BIOS. So you don't have to have any issues. And what I mean by that is some motherboards of the X470, they're not up to date for 3900X and 3950X processors. So you have to use an older one Flash the BIOS, update it, or these processors will not even work. So this should work with the 3950X. Again, we'll find out later on. Second up, our SSD drive. We are using the one from Vistang and uh, GPURisers.com. And if you would like your, your own, this is 64 gigabytes, just fine for anything to do with crypto mining. Any OS you need, this will run it. It is big enough. Code Rabid Mining will grant you 10% off. The 3900 or 3950, I'm used to saying 3900X. The 3950X uh, does not come with its own cooler. And I'm gonna be using, because I have extra ones from ordering DH, uh, NHD50 Noctua coolers, I do have two extra Wraith Prism stock coolers. So I am gonna be using that on this. I think it should be just fine, but we'll find out what happens when I get into some testing here. And if I do have to order something a little more powerful in the future. But I think we should be fine with this, especially with your nice efficient settings that I usually do use. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out those other videos. RAM versus Ryzen, uh, Raptorium hash rates, those couple of videos go through my different settings as well as RAM usage. Uh, here we do have G-Skill Flare CL14 RAM, 16 gigabytes, so it's 8 gigabytes per stick. I think you can get away with two sticks of 4 gigabyte for a total of 8 gigabyte because... We do not actually use that much, but why I do prefer CL14. Yes, it's a little more expensive. CL16 isn't too much less hash rate, but for the price, depending where you do live, CL16 is just fine. But I do prefer the nice sweet spot is two sticks of CL14. Again, previous videos test all this out for you. Now this motherboard does work headless, but initially I do got this old, what is this? Like a GT670 or something like that from Gigabyte. I will be using this two gigabyte card just to get a display here and set up our BIOS. And then I will be removing that, doing all my tests in Hive OS. And we're gonna be checking power consumptions, obviously to do that. We got our trusty watt meter right here. So a lot of stuff will be happening on the CPU as most of my tests have always been on a 3900X CPU. So we're gonna find out, is this upgrade worth it for the price and everything, depending what you do find on MSP, MSRP, obviously the best price to performance is the 3900X, but we'll find out based on the price that I got this one on. And my last ATX power supply is this 1000 watt Corsair PSU, which I actually got from RevTech quite a few months back when we were doing those RevTech videos. So thanks to them for this. So we will be utilizing that. I do not have any more ATX PSUs because they're all used up in my other rigs, but I do have some workarounds coming on because I do plan on running up to six rigs per server power supply. So stay tuned for that. My mod in Discord gave me some fancy ideas and Parallel Miner has a special little breakout board thing, not dedicated to CPU mining, but we're gonna be trying that out with a whole bunch of different hookups and multiple Picos that are rated for up to 300 watts. So stay tuned when that stuff does come in. We'll be revamping how we do power all these rigs. And of course, a lot of you guys have been asking me, are these 3D printed motherboard standoffs? They are pretty sweet. Chump Change actually printed himself off some, and he has his mounted to his wall. So that is pretty cool, but 
I don't know. I would not want my rig falling, but hey, that's what they're made for, so you never know. I wouldn't trust them myself, though. That's pretty insane, but grass to you, and it looks pretty sweet there, chump, so I can't wait to see till you get that whole wall filled up. All right, let's hit step one, and that is undoing this little lock clamp here. Now, I did make sure all these were tight already beforehand, so we are all good there. As you know, in that first build video I did do, we did have one screw loose, but that's okay. We are not running into that issue ever again. So here is our chip. Bottom left corner usually, if that focuses, it's not focusing, whatever. Bottom left corner down here, you will see a little mark and there's a little white spot on your motherboard down there. So you do have to line those up. We're just gonna plop this in here. It is pretty simple to build. We've done multiple. It fell right in. Just give it a little wiggle, a little shake. You can feel it inside the groove. We're all good. We're gonna clamp this down and our CPU is already installed. It is that easy, nothing to it whatsoever. Next up, we are gonna apply our stock cooler. But as I say in previous videos, it does come with its own pre-applied thermal paste, but it can get quite sticky. You can use this 100%, no issues. But I do like to wipe it off and put on my own thermal paste just so I know it is good. Also, this stuff can get quite sticky. We are CPU mining, so it's on all the time, so it'll always be warm. But when Ryzen, when this 3000 series first came out, people were having issues when their PC was turned off and they went to change their actual CPU and they're actually ripping uh, their CPU right apart. If this top plate would come right off and all the chips and everything would be inside still. So it's split in two because this did get too sticky. So always warm up your PC before you do change these Ryzen processors so you don't have that issue. Uh, this is also the reason why I do change my thermal paste so it's not as sticky as this. But because these are mining, they will be warm all the time. So you should have no issue shutting it off when you're done if you do have to swap out a CPU or something. So I'm going to go clean this up and we will be right back. Clean as a whistle and good to go right on. Now we do have to apply our thermal paste first. Now as you can see, I do have some Noctua right here. There we go. NTH1. Now they do have a newer version, NTH2 but I've never tried it and this works 100%, so why fix what's not broken? But who knows, the other stuff may be better. Other people prefer other brands, but you do what you gotta do for you. With Ryzen CPUs, they do have two chips, unlike Intel with one in the middle, which is what you do use your bead method for, your little pea size. It is right here, one on the left here, in between the R and the Y, and right at the bottom of Ryzen. And the second one is underneath here, right between the Z and the E. So I like to go a line right down the middle here to apply my thermal paste. And here we go. Let's see. Oh, no, it's all goobled up. Come on. There we go. That's better. A little messed up here. Oh, we're all over the place. All right, that's okay. That should work. That's just fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. The pressure will smooth it out nice and even. But yeah, that's probably my worst job I've ever done, but I'm fine with it. Before I put this on, and if you are unaware, there is a little switch on these coolers for the fans. There's an L and an H. Now that's low and high. And pretty much what the H and L mean, well, I always put it over to high before I actually install it because that unlocks the RPM of the fan to allow it to kick up higher to ultimately keep your CPU cool. So I always put this on high. I have no issues. I don't really care about the noise. We got an ASIC in the back. So if this thing is outperforming the ASIC and it's bothering you, you got issues. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But just put this in high mode before you do install it. Or you can do it after, it doesn't matter. But this time, I usually don't forget it if I do it first. All right, let's get this cooler in here. Nice and straight and smooth. I always hate this part, getting this first one on. Get that one side over there in. There we go. There we go. Now I just gotta pull this one out. Can't get in here with the camera, it's right in front of me. There we go. Push this down. Oh, I pushed it in. I'm failing totally horribly here. One issue with this cooler, it's kind of a pain at times. Let's just reposition. There we go. Now we're in there. In. Boom. Set. Now just push a little pressure, hold it nice and straight, and just push this over like so. There we go. All locked in. Get it down all the way. We are good to go, nice and tight. Let that thing sit for a little bit and see what happens here. A lot of people, some people, uh, if you don't put enough pressure on it, this will seem very, very tight. People have actually broken their handle. So we didn't do that here, so that's a good thing. Next up here, we do have our RAM. Now, if you are unfamiliar with DDR4 RAM, there's a long side and a short side, and you do not want to put it in backwards. One, it won't fit, and two, if you think it's supposed to go that way and it doesn't and you put pressure on it, 
you will wreck all your pins and you'll have a really bad day that day. This will be running in dual channel and on these motherboards, they're all different. So this is the only part I actually recommend. If you don't know what you're doing and you're trying a new motherboard, read your manual to figure out where the RAM sticks do go for dual channel because sometimes you start the CPU and work your way out. And on this one specifically, you start at this end and work your way in and you use channel A and B. So you use one stick in each channel and this is where you do find that info in the motherboard. Now we use this motherboard on almost every build that I have. So I know exactly where these go. We're going in uh, slot one and two this way. So this is A1 and this is B1. So I'm calling that two, I messed up, but it's A1 and B1 right here. Uh, the first slot of channel A and this first slot of channel B to give you your dual slot action here. Okay, let's get this RAM in there. This way, this way, and clip, clip. Oh, that was the wrong way. I'm just kidding guys, it's not the wrong way. I'm correct, don't worry. I'm just messing with you. I just told you not to do it the wrong way and I did it the wrong way. <laughs> there we go, our RAM is in, all set, ready to roll. Now we've got to plug in our power, our GPU, plug in the monitor, uh, tune this thing up in uh, our BIOS there and then load her up in the hive and let her roll. Power hookups for this motherboard is our 24 pin, which is right in front of our RAM. That is this big boy on your ATX, which goes into actually here, you can see it's two separate plugs on your ATX PSU. And our eight pin PS, our CPU plug is gonna go right here. Now this is a little four pin beside it. This is a gaming gimmick. Most, pretty much all motherboards have it now, but pretty much it states, plug that in if you wanna overclock, that way you can get more performance in games. Well, guess what? This doesn't really do anything. You can get just as much performance out of this one as this one. Now, the only time you'd probably use this if you're on like a big channel like Linus or possibly J2 sets and you want to do some super crazy overclocks with like liquid nitrogen, then you'd probably be using that plug. But for gaming and mining and anything, all you need is a single eight pin. Just get rid of that right completely. Okay guys, here we are. Everything is completely built, all ready to roll. We got our GPU in, ethernet cable, don't forget that. First time ever, you always need your power switch or it will not boot up in the BIOS when we do our settings here in a quick minute. You will, I will show you how you can disable this. You got to turn on your restore power after AC loss. So everything is good to go. Ignore this. This is just for my monitor that I'm going to be plugging in just to set up my BIOS. And then this thing is up and running. We're good to go. And we'll do some testing and stuff in a future video. But this is just the initial build. So I'm going to fire this up and we're going to do our BIOS, set it up, and we're all good. Here is the moment of truth. Power supply is on. Nothing is spinning. We are ready to hit this button here. And boom. Oh yeah, look at that guys, we're ready to roll. I do have to spam the delete key. I'll be right back to get this into the BIOS. <laughs> Here we are inside our BIOS. As we can see, we are up and running and everything's detected as is, so that's a great first start. So I'm gonna go F7 here. We are gonna go into settings and I believe it's advanced. Where is power management? And restore after AC power loss, power on right there. All set, good to go. Next up, we're gonna have to go back. And I'm gonna go into my OC settings and we're gonna crank this to, we're gonna go on all core overclock at 3.6. 3.6, you can see right there. XMP, we do have disabled, we're keeping that off. Sorry if you guys can't see the screen too, too well. Default, now we're gonna go to our power voltage and we're gonna go to override mode and auto we're going to set this down to one volt boom so that is it now we're going to hit f10 that'll save everything so we can see restore after ac power loss is now turned on cpu ratio is at 3.6 well 36 so that's 3.6 all core and cpu voltage is at 1.496 well we change that overrode it to one volt so we're all set 3.6 all core overclock at one volt i just got to hit enter and we are all good boom now this should start loading into HiveOS. I'm gonna have to check my dashboard. Once this does load, we're getting all blurry there because it doesn't know what is going on. Here we are guys, HiveOS loaded up and there is our GTX 672 gigabyte card. What should we mine with that thing? Uh, what uh, what algorithms are actually good for under two gigabytes? I don't know, maybe that'll be a nice future test. What kind of profits will this old, old, old GPU make us. But there we are, 3950X with a GT672 gigabyte card. So we are gonna shut this down now. Bam, and confirm. There we go. Shutting this rig down. It should go down any minute here now. And once it does, I will be pulling the GPU off and I will be rebooting this up 
without a, any GPU in it, so running headless, and then we can start doing some power tests and stuff. But that is all for another video. Here we are, guys. Rig 7, back in Hive OS, loaded up, no flight sheet, getting ready to tell it what to do. No GPU, anything in stock, and we are idling at... 37 36 36 37 watts so we'll be doing some power tests and everything on this in a future video so i want to thank everyone for watching this video hit that subscribe button thumbs up bell notification i'll catch you guys on the next one rabid out thank you for watching everyone if you haven't please comment subscribe and like this video as well as check out one of these other videos if you have not seen it yet i do try to stream every saturday and sunday so stay tuned for more future content